As many of us know, jewel crafting is a very lucrative profession, and that doesn't change with Wrath of the Lich King. In fact, it gets even more lucrative. Back in the day, they coined a phrase called the Saranite Shuffle. If you don't know what the Saranite Shuffle is, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But it's the most optimal way to prospect Saranite ore to be able to make gold. Now, if you don't know, Saranite ore is plentiful. It's certainly not a difficult resource to come by. Expect to see the auction house absolutely flooded with it and expect to see people spamming trade, buying Saranite ore, buy the stack of unlimited amounts for X amount of gold per stack. Now, the Saranite shuffle is something that a lot of people talk about when they jump in the stream and they're like, oh, I'm doing this profession and that profession. This character is going to be alchemist. This one's going to be jewel crafting and I'm doing it all for the Saranite Shuffle. If you're not familiar with what it is, I found a great article from years back in 2010, I believe it was. Yep, back in, had to check, back in 2010. And we're going to have a look at it and break it down. I claim absolutely no credit for this whatsoever. In fact, we're going to credit the people who done this all those years ago that we're still going to make use of today. Before we get any further, just want to say a quick thank you to all you guys who have either joined as patrons, because there are patrons now. So thank you guys. And to everybody in the scrolling banner below, who has joined the channel as a member. More on how you can support the channel at the end of the video. So this particular article was wrote on April the 14th, 2010 by B. Burns Burnson. B. Burnson. I hope I'm saying your name right if you're watching. Why would you be watching? And it's on Engadget, where I find lots of useful articles for Rafa the Lich King, actually. But the whole point of it is, do you want to get gold capped? This column shows you how. Join author Basil. If I thought his surname was hard to say, I'm not even going to try his character's name. Also, out of OutDPS.com, the Hunting Party podcast and Call to Auction podcast. Saranite ore is cheap and plentiful, as I said. And prospecting it with a jewel crafter used to be extremely profitable back before the introduction of the disenchant option in dungeons, and the price of infinite dust was flawed. It was so popular that we had our own name for it, the Saranite Shuffle. Now, if you're not familiar with what that's talking about, if you've got an enchanter in the group, where you've got need and greed when an item drops there's also a disenchant option and as you can see here it was actually introduced in patch 3.3 so if an item of uncommon quality or above drops for a party that includes an enchanter of appropriate skill the player will be given a disenchant role option along with the usual need greed and pass so they was pleased in this article that is back the saranite shuffle that is it's no longer profitable to use it for making enchanting mats however it is profitable overall so there's a few keys to making the saranite shuffle work for you Firstly, these days you need access to an alchemist, ideally with Transmute Master, mostly for your Transmute Sky Flare Diamond and Transmute Earth Siege Diamond. Epic Gem Transmutation is limited to once every 20 hours and shouldn't really be considered in your final profitability. Now, if you check my video that I actually done on the channel a few days ago on alchemy, or it might be months ago, depending on when you're watching this, I talk about how to make money with transmutes and the best transmutes to do and cover, obviously, epic gems in quite a lot of detail. You will use that transmute every day. But like it says here, the reason it's going to be Skyflare Diamond and Earth Siege Diamond, which if you don't know, that's the raw gem that you need to craft a meta gem socket. So that would be for your agility and crit damage, for example, or your spell crit and crit damage. So you, you get what I mean. Yeah, it's for your meta gem. The reason for this is because some of the materials that you prospect go perfectly with that transmute. So if you've got a jewel crafter on as one character and you've got an alchemist as a transmute master as another, you're about to find out how to make a lot of gold. What to do with the greens? So prospecting Saranite will give you a lot of green quality gems. These are used for a variety of things. Metagen transmutes, crafting greens for disenchant or vendor, and flat out cutting and vendoring. Here's an awesome visual guide put together by Zamboni on the JMTC forums. So as you can see, if we start in the middle at the Saranite Ore, you're going to prospect the Saranite Ore. If you get a Shadow Crystal, you're going to cut it into any gem you want and vendor it. If you get a Dark Jade and a huge Citrine, and then you combine these with an Eternal Fire, then you can transmute an Earth Siege Diamond. Or if you want to do something with a huge Citrine on its own, you'll create a Crystal Citrine Necklace. This I would disenchant. And then going back to Saranite Ore in the middle, if you get a Sun Crystal, you'll create a Sun Rock Ring, which again, you can vendor. You could sell on the auction house for low-level characters that are leveling, or you can disenchant it for infinite dust. So when we move over the other side, we've got Chalcedony. I actually had to look up. I've always called that Chalcedony. Don't laugh at me. I don't know what it is. I had to just look up how to pronounce that properly. Chalcedony, apparently. But if you get that, that goes into the crystal Chalcedony amulet. But me personally, I would sell these for the damaged necklace, which jewel crafters hand in to be able to get a jewel crafting token. These Chalcedonies, I'm just going to keep saying it now because I'm showing off, these will sell very well throughout the entire expansion because every single damaged necklace that gets handed in for a token 
requires one of these. Then you've got Bloodstone, which you'll use to craft a Bloodstone ring, which again, this is a green ring, so you can disenchant it for infinite dust, or you can just flat out vendor it or sell it on the auction house. But if you take Chalcedony and Bloodstone and you combine it with Eternal Air, then you can transmute on your Alchemist a Sky Flare Diamond. And remember, if you're Transmute Master, you've got a chance at proccing extra of these. So doing the transmutes, going around farming a few Eternal Airs, farming a few Eternal Fires to use these green gems to transmute into your meta gem, raw uncut meta gems, is definitely going to be a good thing to do. So moving on, the first thing to note is that if at any time selling a green gem on the auction house would be worth more than whatever this diagram says to do, sell it on the auction house. Most of these green gems are in high demand for a variety of reasons, like the JC dailies. And if you can save yourself some work and make extra profit by listing your raw gems on the AH, go for it. Which obviously makes sense. You know, don't follow it. Your server may differ. There might be some of these gems that are selling really, really high, more than what it's going to be worth crafting a ring and then DE in it. So obviously, absolutely check the auction house before you do any of this. But this is a good sort of basic way of, of the Saranite shuffle. You can see here that for all green gems you'll get, there's something you can do with them to make a little profit. If you add it all up together, it's considerably profitable. Low 70s green armor like Sunrock rings vendor for more than they tend to be worth after disenchanting. So aside from the initial prospecting, a lot of the steps you'll take can be done while AFK. Prioritize your work based on profitability. Look through the AH and list any of these gems for sale if they're over what you'd make by processing them. Then look at the uncut meta gems, as do the two most popular raiding cuts, Chaotic Skyflare and Relentless Earth Siege Diamond, which I've mentioned both of those already. Transmute and cut the metas, and then decide whether you have time to cut or craft the rest, vendor or disenchant. Generally, the price of dust has to be over 1.25 gold for disenchanting to be profitable. For most servers, that means vendoring will be the best. Now, we know we live in a very different economy in World of Warcraft than we did back then. Don't take that gold figure as fact. It will probably be a lot more than that you would expect now. If it was one and a half gold or whatever it was back then, you know, you're expecting a couple of gold for infinite dust for it to be worth then disenchanting the rings. But use this as a basis of everything you do when you're prospecting and then using your alchemist to transmute it does then go on to say the blue quality gems you get are going to be the other side of your profits you have a few choices you can transmute once per day per alchemist if you have an alchemist and you can cut and vendor or cut an auction there's a vibrant and thriving market for blue quality gems which there will be even more so at the start because there's going to be no epic gems. Any non-raiders who have temporary gear but just need to throw a cheap gem into the gear will buy these. I think that's the point of the article where we leave it because this is definitely post 3.2. That This article was wrote after TOC was out where epic gems were introduced. Blue gems are obviously going to be extremely profitable from the word go. This Saranite shuffle, I would say, is at its most profitable and should almost be followed to the rule on that diagram at the start of the expansion. So at the start of Wrath of the Lich King, I would say this is literally, if you've got an alchemist and you've got a jewel crafter, live by it. Just in case you've heard the term Saranite shuffle thrown around and you didn't know what it was, now you do. Like and subscribe to the channel, really helps out. Thank you for all your support, guys. Really appreciate it. Roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you remember when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.